Hi, good morning everybody and welcome to Hot Shots TV. I'm Scott Briard. Following up on our talk the other day about thoroughbred darts and our review on them, quite a few dozen questions actually came through our email line about thoroughbred darts, about Jeff Pickup, the inventor and such. So we did the best thing we could. We couldn't get Jeff here so quickly, um, but I'm actually on the phone with Jeff right now. Jeff, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, Jeff, how are you? Fine, thanks, we're good, Scott. Good, we're just gonna spend about maybe five, 10 minutes here. I just wanna quickly talk to you about, I had lots of emails come through and I've got a whole sheet here with some questions. We might not be able to get through them all. Um, but starting off with something, you were the original founder, I guess inventor of the thoroughbred point, correct? That, that was that is correct. Yeah. Okay. What? Uh, not to be confused. Not. Please understand, I don't claim to be the inventor of the retractable point. No, 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 no. But the the thoroughbred collar and point, correct? Yes. The thoroughbred okay. uh, design was was mine initially. Yes. Okay. About what year did you? I mean, we're going back quite a ways because I again I think I've known I, you since the late eighties. Yeah. It was about 1983. Wow. Now, were you living in the Toronto area or in Brampton at the time? I was living in Malton at the time, in yes. Malton. It's funny how Brampton seemed to be the epicenter of darts back in the late 80s with Ed Oliver yeah, and Falcon. And, uh, and, a lot of that was, uh, was due to Ed Oliver, I think. Right. No, certainly. It, it certainly. As a youth player back in the late 80s, we were lucky to be the Brampton youth because we were around a lot of... The pros would fly in and spend a lot of time in Brampton. A lot of the major tournaments were held up by the airport, so we were fortunate as kids. So did you now? Did you play in leagues back in the eighties? Is that what got you interested oh, in? Oh yes, yes, I played uh, quite a lot. Yeah. Now I played in, uh, in the Brampton and District Men Men's uh, Men's Dart League, which was uh, was and I think I believe still is quite a big Monday night league. It is actually. I've got a lot of customers that actually shop here at our store that play in that that Monday night dart league. Now, how did you? I mean, you played darts and then realized that there was an issue with darts bouncing out. Is that what gave you the idea for the thoroughbred? Well, to be perfectly honest, and I, I, it's never my intention to hoodwink anybody, I, I did not intend to copy the Bottleson idea, but the Bottleson hammerhead system was the first movable point that impressed me. Right. And I simply, uh, as a player, uh, I played with some of the first hammerhead systems okay. and uh, found or felt that they had uh, shortcomings and I felt I could improve on the removable point system generally without trying to copy the, ham the hammerhead, the balls and right. rubber. I think one of the biggest complaints that have always been about the hammerhead is that the collar breaks quite easy with those four Yeah, the, uh, the, the leaf, the small leaf springs that are meant to hold on to the head of the of the point to give it friction. Uh, yeah, it it only needs one of those to fracture, right. and you've lost lost the friction completely. Right now, it must have been exciting in the '80s creating something like this. I remember as a youth player that everyone was switching over to thoroughbred darts, especially in the Toronto area. I think a lot of Canadians were switching over to retractable. Did any pros that you're aware of start throwing them back in the late '80s? Yes. Uh, Jerry Umberger and Larry Butler in the United States were users of my product back then. Oh, fantastic. Now, was there any, another question that we, we were asked immediately was, um, is it illegal to use retractable points in any of the major professional organizations, I guess, the BDO or the PDC? Are you aware of any? I, I am not. Uh, one time in the early stages, of the retractable point dart, uh, the BDO did put a ban on them because they felt it was a, it was to a certain extent it was a compliment because they felt that the user of a retractable point barrel had an advantage over a person that wasn't using it, so they they put a ban on it in order to keep the, the playing field level. Right. That was the that was the thinking at the time. However, to the best of my knowledge, it, the ban didn't last too long, and I don't think there is one that exists anywhere anymore. Right. Now, did you all the darts originally in the thoroughbreds? Did you build them, or did you have the barrels made in England and apply the collar and point here? What were the original well, thoroughbreds? Well, the the original 
design, you know, which I did. I made the bottles myself when I made the points and colors myself. Right. And then, of course, I sold the rights of the of the system to Mr. McKenna, who uh, had had this had the product mass produced in the United Kingdom, I believe, by Retriever Sports. Right. Now is that's it where that's I, I wasn't set up to produce quantities which were eventually uh, introduced and you know pushed onto the market. It right. became a it became a, a big product under the importation as a third as third bread. I didn't give it that name. That was the name that Art McKenna gave it. I think he owned racehorses. That must have been where uh, where that came from. He was, he was involved with uh, with horse racing. Yes. Right. So, what was your original name for it? Was it the pickup point, or was there was there a name for it at the time? Tell the truth. There was a a specific. I had formed a company called JP Industries. Right. Now, if if you say JP Industries. JP GP, GP, fairly fast, it becomes GP. Okay. And for the longest time, I used the term GP, G-I-P-P-Y, as a name for my point system. 